This video is a bit late, I intended to make it sooner, but I like, procrastinated it a bit, but anyway. How the balance team, testers, and VTEX managed to fuck up balance more than any update before is actually insane. Warrior, Mage, and AoE Warlock were all in a state of plain superiority to the other classes, and it's just fucking madness. After weapon affinities were added, in combination with 270 weapon, Warrior rose from the bottom to be overpowered, with AoE weapons all having high size affinities, and the weapon equip speed buff, Warrior's just too strong. Sparrow Thrust is a, like, shockwave smash and beam had a baby, it's just, it's just mental. It's also Fury of the Sea, which I think Vtex didn't consider would be OP to have its damage scale so high, since people who don't know how to play the game uh, are able to make it do 200 damage per tick and win fights. You'll never see that from Pulsar, I'll tell you that. Also, Warrior's problem isn't just the AoE weapons, it's that projectile weapons are just outclassed. Would you rather have Flying Slash and Piercing Shot, or Blast and Beam? Or even Axe Slash and Shot? Weapon projectiles just don't have a place where they stand out. In fact, the only properly useful projectile is a Dagger Throw and the average player won't have a good time landing that, and the damage really is sub half for how small it is. And in this respect, it's also outshined once again by magic. A 20% drill far beats out a dagger throw. Now onto the second part of this. Fighting Styles. Fighting Styles as a skill-based playstyle is practically dead this update. Thermal and Boxing both got quite the nerfs, really incentivizing the AoE styles, primarily Iron Leg. And since mobility has been reduced, AoE is more difficult to dodge, incentivizing this AoE spam more and more since Smash didn't receive a damage nerf unlike Crash, Shot and Axe Slash. And speaking of Axe Slash, as the only real useful Berserker exclusive move, it doesn't really have any reason to be preferable over just running Warlock and having the option to use Blast and Beam, Blast outclassing Axe Slash in cooldown speed and Beam outclassing Shot in range in cooldown. Shot obviously does still have practicality though, when Beam is present. There's no real reason to run Berserker now, when Warlock exists. Onto the third part of this though, Magic. Magic's in a very boring state right now, since there isn't even competition between which mage is the best, because stun removal just means Shadow is indisputably OP. All mage builds are just ununique now, like... There's there's no difference to be had when you can just run Shadow and it be like undeniably OP. It's brain dead with no synergies to consider, meaning you can just choose a secondary for Arcanium stats. The next issue is in spell creation. Blast shapes have a simple problem: hitbox sizes. Drill is just overpowered with no reason to choose any other shape. In 1.11 on 1.12, it had a hitbox bug to be far bigger than a normal blast which was obviously problematic since his drawback was size. Vtex did what he usually does and put a band-aid fix on it, and made it the same hitbox as a normal blast, thereby invalidating the negative of the shape even after this fix. Now that all the bugged hitbox shapes are gone after 1.14, Drill is objectively the most overpowered shape, it's a free 10% damage. It's the same hitbox as a normal blast. The next part of this problem is also within blast customization. Multi-blasts have been buffed, the size deficit and interval between the blasts have been reduced. This is effectively another free 10% damage. So the current balancing just incentivizes all mages to be running Shadow Mage double drill because it's just objectively the best. Mage also has the highest DPS since blast has a 0.75 second cooldown and a 1.5 second cooldown on beam, with two magics to cycle between if that's too long for you. So Mage is stupidly stat efficient because it abuses things that should have a drawback, but it's negated because of goofy balancing. Now the second chapter of this video, stats. First off, power and defense. Regeneration was nerfed to be in relation to base HP, but reduced by only 25% in combat now, so we regen 7 per second. The defense given by everything has been significantly raised to compensate for this, this creates problems. Since regen is standardised, a glass cannon's hits will take far longer to regen than a tank's hits, making power objectively better than defence in theory. And armour piercing. Armour piercing is straight up useless, unless the target's blocking. The armour piercing formula is the substat percentage multiplied by the target's defence over 2176. You think that's decent, right? Nah, no, they halved that effectiveness, thinking it was too OP from seeing very extreme examples. It now only finds use against blocking targets, if its only function is against blocking targets, then it's not a guard break type move you'd see in different fighting games. It seems kinda shit. And resistance, well there's none that fucking uses it for me to even have an idea on if it's good. Since it only exists on a select few of the new armor sets and a select few of the Arcanium affinities. Obviously gems and enchants for exist work too, but the way it works is only functioning during moves. The difference between armor piercing is that armor piercing has a use. While obviously much weaker now, it has a use. Resistance just doesn't get, like, used. Considering the stat sacrifice for it, in the place of any other substat on Maria's armor and of course replacing it with enchants that could be used, and on gems they're the only stat, so it's just quite the stat sacrifice for something that really just not that effective. Also, for some reason they made fighting style armor give more stat efficiency than Arcanium. Really weird, like, I'm not sure on all the technicalities, but so like, don't take this for 100%. But I have a fighting style armor that gives 140-ish defense and my Arcanium gives like 50. 
If a balance team member could just tell me what's up with that in the comments, that'd be fire. And I think that's all I have to say for now. If you've watched for this long, I'm sure you can sit through more of my videos to come. So why not subscribe? It's only like one fourth of you that make it to the end of the video. So it should make sense that you would subscribe. Anyway, have a nice day.